Hello everyone, welcome to the course on quantum theory of many body systems in condensed matter here at the Institute of Physics at the University of Sao Paulo. My name is Luis Gregorio Diaz, and in today's class we're going to go over the formalism of second quantization. We're going to discuss the number occupation basis, this creation and destruction operators, and also number operators, which will be very, very useful for us when we discuss uh, operators in this uh, acting in this space such as Hamiltonians and other operators uh, as usual let me just say the, uh, this quick remark that as usual I'm going to flip between these slides and what I call the blackboard where I can take handwritten notes uh, for some of the derivations so in this class in particular I'm adding these little squares here so that you you might want you you can take notes whenever I switch to the blackboard. So whenever you see this, you might want to stop the video and start taking notes because what appears here in the, the blackboard will not show up in the PDF for the slides only in the in the video. Okay, all right. So let's go right in. Okay. So as we saw in the previous class. Uh, we have the symmetrized and anti-symmetrized basis for n-particle systems and they will be symmetrized or anti-symmetrized depending on whether the particles are bosons or fermions and we wrote them in terms of the single particle orbitals this is the so-called first quantization basis and then of course we have this property whether the basis functions are either symmetric or anti-symmetric with respect to the exchange of two particles of the position of two particles so if you have a symmetrized base you exchange the position of two of the particles in your state you go back to the same state with a plus sign here now, if you have fermions, on the other hand, if you exchange the position of these two particles, you go to minus the, the state. All right. So, in general, we can write these uh, bases and particle functions in configuration space in terms of these single particle orbitals as a uh, something like this there's going to be a prefactor which accounts for normalization say in this example for two particles we have one over square root of two and then I'm introducing this operator which symmetrizes a tensor product of single particle states symmetrizers or anti-symmetrizers so it works as as this uh, if you have a let, let's start with a with the fermions which is more more uh, easy to to do the connection with a determinant so if you start say you want to have an anti-symmetrized combination of, a, of products of the single particle wave functions what you do you you can say take a determinant so this looks very very much like a two by two determinant between say uh, single particle functions phi naught and phi one right and then you take phi naught say here and phi one at position phi naught here at position r1 phi naught here at position r2 or x2 in this case and then phi one at position x1 or and phi 1 at position x2 uh, and then if you take this 2 by 2 determinant that's what you get right you get phi naught which would be here at position x1 times phi 1 at position x2 minus phi 1 uh, at position x1 times phi naught at position x2 so this would be like a 2 by 2 determinant this one as well, except here that you you, you change the, the the single particle wave functions that you're using. 
So uh, in the case for n particles, you can you can construct such a basis using a n by n determinant, right? So each one of these states for n particles will be a different determinant with with different functions here that you will choose, right? Uh, at the end of the day, you you need n orbitals. Notice that the number of orbitals can be larger than that, but you will get a determinant by by just doing doing this. You get an anti-symmetrized uh, n particle basis for fermions. Let me add that is very uh, tempting to to do to write such a thing as an ansatz for the ground state. In, and this ansatz is usually called the Slater determinant. That's one of the states for, say, a non-interacting uh, fermionic system. That's how you construct that. Uh, uh, essentially, you take the order of the the orbitals and you you put them here. Like the, this, is the, the the first single particle orbital. Here's the second. It doesn't have to be that way. You you can get excited states by, you know, not taking here like starting from the third say single particle orbital and, and go and, and going all the way up uh, but for the ground state for the non-interacting system if you order the single particle states in, in order of, of energy and you do this determinant you get the ground state right for non-interacting fermionic systems okay how about for bosons for bosons this would be the same thing except that instead of the determinant which will get these minus signs when you do right you, when you when you say a two by two you, you you multiply these two and then when you multiply the the ones in the other diagonal you would get a minus sign right the permanent would get it it, it is the equivalent of a determinant with a plus sign right and then if you do that uh, you can even um, get this all the states the single particle states to, to be the same and then you you get a basis uh basis wave functions like this right so this is more like a, a short for how you construct these single particle states but this this is all for schematization okay let's go to the next one Okay, but you see, this is very cumbersome to write these determinants or permanents and try to, you know, keep track of which states you're using to get which basis states. So there is another representation which is more useful for treating many body systems that you don't, uh, you essentially hide all the, all the, the messy part of seeing whether you get a plus sign or 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 a minus sign in the algebra of the operators acting on this basis and this basis is called the number occupation basis right which it labels it is essentially a mini by state an anybody state which labels like this you have these integers n1 and 2 up to n where n is the number of particles which count how many single particle states of one say of say at this at this label and the label here uh runs from one to n meaning is that meaning that you you need n single particle states to construct this this state and you count how many particles are in each one of these single particle states how many on state one, how many on state two, etc., and until you have uh, this this one uh, on on the the state that you, you're label label labeling n here. So uh, notice that this can can is is not the the first n single particle states on your spectrum. It can be any any sequence sequence of n capital n here orbitals so it doesn't have to be you know the, the very first orbital to the last one but this indices this index can run up to infinity if you want but if you have n states you only have 
capital N uh, numbers here, right? Not more than that. And the constraint for a, a state with, with exactly N particles, capital N particles, is that the sum of these numbers will be equal to N. So we're going to go over a few examples here, but uh, just keep in mind that uh, for fermions, it, of course, we cannot have more than one fermion in, in, a, in a given single particle state. Otherwise, it won't be symmetrized. Uh, for instance, we cannot have states like this here. Here I have two particles in the same state, the zero state. So uh, here in this case, n0 and not is 2. And here n1 is 2. But I cannot have this in, in the fermionic basis. So it means that for fermions, n can be either 0 or 1. But for bosons, you can have multiple occupations in the same state, doesn't matter. So we can go from 0, 1, etc. But in any case, the sum of n, j has to be n, right? And then we can, we can actually count how many how many single particle states are for a given value of i or j here. You can count how many single particle states are occupied by acting with the number operator on this state. And this essentially is an operator that gives you the, the number, this is an integer, of the occupation of the kth state, right? So this, in this basis, this is is diagonal is these uh, are eigenstates of the number operator right not and notice that this is not the total numbers just the, the number of single particles of uh, particles occupying uh, the single part state labeled K okay and of course we had and, and one important difference from the one body or the single particle the 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 first quantization basis is that here we can define a vacuum state meaning a state where there's no occupied for single particle states at all right and in the previous basis if you look at it let's go back this this state is simply not well defined right is something that you you it's is something that has absolutely no occupied uh, single particle orbitals. So it would be like a zero here or a zero there. Here you already start with, you know, two particles occupying states and here's the same, but for here we can formally ascribe a system where there's nothing. There's no particles, nothing. That's what we call the vacuum. Okay. So let's start with this example. Let's say that you have a, a basis for single particles, and I'm just going to consider the first three states, but you can go on, right, and up, up to infinity. You can think of these as, as our harmonic oscillator states, or, or that we discussed in, in the other class, or any basis that you want for you know, solutions for a single particle uh, Hamiltonian, and then you you start creating your symmetric symmetrized basis for two particles, right? So you start with this one, and then you go that, and you call you you calculate all these permanents from the combinations of these single particle states, right? So in this case, how you you go to the to the to the number occupation representation? Well, we just count how many particles are in a given state. So here you have two, the two particles are in state phi zero. So we have n zero equals two and the other two are zero. Uh, here you have one particle on state one and the other particle on state two. This is of course symmetrized. So I'm, I'm representing that with a, with, a, with a plus sign, but later I'll drop this. But just so you know that here we're talking about bosons. So we have zero bosons in state zero, one in state one, and, and one in state two. 
uh, notice that we here we can have you know both particles and in the same state so I could have uh, you know n1 equals 2 and n0 equals 0 and n2 equals 0 the only constraint is, is when you add them up they have to give 2 for fermions the situation is a, is a bit different because uh, you can have either 0 or 1 state occupied so here I have uh, say one one particle in state 0 and one particle in state 2 so it's 1, 0, 2, but of course this, you have to remember that this is an anti-symmetrized base, basis, basis uh, set or basis state. And same here, you have one particle in state 1 and another particle in state 2. And notice one thing that is very important. If you just write the numbers and 0 equals 0 and 1 is equal 1 and 2 equal 1, uh, this labeling is exactly the same as this one right so you say oh well how can I tell whether th these are are bosons or these are fermions well in fact you can't just by looking at, at the at the labels for the states you have to know that this is describing uh, a, a fermionic state and this one is describing a bosonic state and how you do that well you have to see how do you get from the vacuum to, uh, to this state, whether you're adding bosons or you're adding fermions. So it's a different philosophy than in the first quantization case, where just by looking at the state, you can tell whether it is an anti-symmetric uh, basis state or is a symmetrized one or a symmetric state under the exchange of particles. So here's the, the philosophy is that this information, whether you, you're, you're having bosons or, or fermions is actually encoding in something else which is the um, not only the the how, how you get from from the vacuum to the state but also in the order of the indices here notice that if you if you change the order meaning that you're calling now state 2 and you now say okay now now i'm calling this state right this state here i'm calling it uh one instead of two right and so i, I have let, let, let's go here right so so i have this state i'm labeling this state one state two the order here tells me that this is particle one state one particle two in state one in state two and, and here is the is the reverse so if you uh, are checking for this in configuration representation, this would be, the, say, the particle at the position that comes first, and this would be the, app, the particle at position that comes second. So this ordering of the tensor product tells you which particles is which. And now notice that if I switch the labels, right, which meaning would, would reflect here in switching the the order of the numbers they don't have to be in decreasing or increasing order or, or some count you can switch them that will, will have encoded the information that you were talking about uh exchange of particles between two states so you know i have here zero and one equals one and two equals one now i have and zero and two equals one and n one equal one equals one this will tell me that I did the exchange of particles between these two states. Notice that it doesn't have to be in an exchange in real space, but only uh, already uh, an exchange in the in the in the um, basis label, right? You're saying, okay, I have a particle in state two and a, another particle in state one, and I'll exchange them. I put the this this particle in state one move it here and this one in state two that will already give me a minus sign here because it essentially exchange two particles in different uh, uh quantum states okay so the order matters that's the message here and that's uh is essentially given by this 
plus or minus signs that's what you get to exchange okay so uh let's talk about creation and destruction operators so i mentioned in the previous slides that the, a very important aspect is how you get from the vacuum state where there's no particles to the particle with a given number of particles to the state with a given number of particles and you do that by essentially acting with operators in the states with ch which change the total number of particles which is something that you know is really hard to 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 do when you're you're talking about the force quantization uh representation for these many body states because if you add another particle you essentially are adding another tensor product to, to, you, to your state so that's not very easy to 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 do right and here this in this number occupation representation this is essentially a very very easy and 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 an operation that is kind of built into the formalism so let's define these operators so this b let's start with this b dagger so b dagger i essentially changes the the number of bosons and here i'm talking about bosons the number of bosons in state j by one you increase the number of bosons occupying state j by one notice that of course this state will have one boson more than this one right uh, and you want to to keep the the states normalized so I'm adding here a, a normalization constant which we will calculate later at, actually you will in a, in one of the assignments and but this is a normalized state uh, on a different Hilbert space right kind of uh it is a a hilbert space with a f with a a number of particles which would be n capital n plus one uh this other operator operator which is prob exactly the complex conjugate of this one does the opposite it decreases the total number of particles in state by removing a particle in the single particle state j so essentially decreases the number of bosons occupying that state by one and of course this there, there will be a, a normalization factor here which might be different than this one so from this it is clear that in the number occupation basis uh, these guys connect uh, states with different total n right and so and in in a in a very specific way only this state which has precisely one more particle at state j is coupled to to this one by this operator so if i do these matrix elements between you know all the states here in that describe uh these particles these uh bosons with n capital n plus one and i have the, the these other bases which I, I i forgot to mention but do form a complete set of states with a total of n bosons in in there in a symmetrized wave function the only matrix elements connecting these two uh sets of states is this one right you have to match exactly nj plus one with nj here with b dagger j and if you take the complex conjugate of this you you get the other one so you you get like you destroy is destroying uh uh a particle of a single particle state j right and you have now nj plus one here and you go to nj and notice that if you uh just relabel things in called nj plus one you call nj prime here you would get nj prime minus one so that's essentially what you would uh you would get uh 
precisely that. You go from here to there. Okay, so these are non-zero matrix elements for on this basis. Now here's a question: What if does the order of creating the operators matter? Right. So it means that if I apply first the I have say this state, and I apply first a, a, this creation operator on state J. So I increase the number of uh, uh, state of bosons in state J by one, and then I I increase the number of bosons in state K by one. Is do I get the same uh, final state as if I first increase the number of bowls in the state K and then increase the number of bowls in the state J. And the answer is yes. And how, how do we know that? Let's go now to the blackboard. So in order to see this more clearly, let's take an example here. Let's consider the vacuum, right? So I have the vacuum and I create a state in say I have a single particle basis here that same one that I had 0 1 and 2 that's my single particle basis now I'm going to create a boson and state say one right that gives me a this is no particles this has one particle and state one okay now I want to create another particle so wh what what does that mean in this is single particles this is n equals one right so in first quantization This n1 equals 1 is essentially phi 1, right? That's that's what you get. All right. Go to single particle state. Now let's create, let's construct a two particle state by acting, creating this, uh, say, let's create this. So on top of In this state, right? I take this state and I create another particle occupying this other one here, right? So what is this? Now I have in zero equals one, and in one equals one. In the first quantization, this remember the order is important. This is 1 over square root of 2, phi naught, phi 1, plus phi 1, phi naught. So this is a two-particle state, and this guy is this, right? Okay, so let's and notice how do I do I keep uh, things in order here, and this is important, I hear it calling this zero, zero, this is one, one. So this is, I'm not saying this is, if I would say what is n one equals one, and is zero equals one, would be the same thing, but essentially I would have to keep my notation consistent, right? That's why I, I say that this doesn't, matter for bosons but for permanence is important so this is this would be if I change the labels right start with one and n equals zero okay now let's do the the opposite so this is something that I get okay now do I get a plus sign if I start if I first create a state at zero and I get and zero equals one which is fine not 
and then I come here and create this. This would be what, right? Let's keep our our notate notation. Now it, you can do this in in different different ways. One that I like is okay. Whenever I I, I create something, I add the the label of the state that I create uh, behind the the one that I had before. So if I had zero, I created the upper the the particle at zero first, then I'll, I'll, I'll keep the zero there in front, and then in front of that, before that, I, I now I get the one. So um, here, this one in my notation corresponds to precisely this state. And so the action, since they are symmetrized and the order matters here, This tells me that this should be should be the same as B zero B one over the vacuum. Okay, so the order should not matter. So I can tell that you know the the final result because. Uh, I'm talking about bosons, and these functions are symmetric under the exchange of particles in, in the states. doesn't matter whether I, I apply 0 first and then 1, or if I apply 1 first and then 0. Okay, so let's go back to the slide. All right, so if the order doesn't matter, and that's the argument we gave, then it means that these two operators should commute. Okay, now I'm, I'm being a little bit um, not totally rigorous here because what I showed you in the slide it is in fact a identity for for expected value so I'm acting for so I showed you the, the result of this operation is the same this, it does not automatically imply a property of the operators themselves but let's keep that in mind but let's continue and 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 assume that 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 that's the case right at least it's reasonable that it should occur it means that a commutator between of these two should be zero so if i take bk times bj minus bj times bk and, and apply that in, in one of these uh, states I should get the same thing and by the same reason reasoning I should also get the, the commutator between the the complex conjugate of these the non dagger versions to be zero as well okay so let's let's uh, assume that this is uh, the property of the oper operators themselves right so there's a commutation relation between them. Now the question is if k and j are different does it matter if I first create a boson on state j for a given number and then I and then I destroy uh, uh, a particle on state k right after so does it matter if I first destroy the particle at state k and then create a a particle at uh, state j right and if k is not equal to j that should be okay right it will not be if the the they would be at the same state and we'll, we'll come back to that so let's let's look and on how this would work and why this is reasonable to expect that the commutator between two these two operators a creation and a destruction operators but on different states should be the same okay so we're back to our blackboard 
so the same uh, single particle states basis and this basis here is not too good let's, let's write something better these is our first single particle basis and let's see that I have a state which is in 0 equals 1 and and in 1 equals 1 right and this basis that would be uh, here would be something like 1 of square root of 2 phi not phi 1 plus phi 1 phi not Right. Oops, there's a parenthesis here. All right, now I come with a creation operator here. First, I create this. This is no longer the case, so let's erase that so you know. Okay. All right, so what do I get? I get now a, this is a two particle operator. Now this that two particle state now it becomes a three particle state this would get n equals zero n equals n equals you know, equals two right all right that's the result now i want to do this i want to destroy a particle at state 0 on this state. This will give me back to a two particle state which would be n0 equals 0 so I'm destroying this particle and n1 equals 2. So this is again n equals 2. And what's the re representation? So let's uh, say this one here is this and this one here is one of square oh there's sorry there's no square root of two here this could be it's just phi one twice right phi one phi one all right why because uh i have two particles in state phi one all right so what happens if i do it on the other way around right so i I have I first I destroy this particle at n equals zero one right there right and this will give me n zero equals zero zero and one equals one that is a single particle state phi one right and I come and I create B1. Uh, well, let, let, let's do this way. Oops, oh, sorry. Let's do it this way. Now I come to this state and I create another particle on, on N1. So this N1 equals 1. And this would give me N... 0 equals 0 and 1 equals 2 so this is again a two-particle state which have to be phi 1 phi 1 so it is the same as this one so as long as I have so as, as long as I, I, I this is a valid operation meaning that say I'm not trying to destroy some something that doesn't exist and then we'll go back to that. But as long as this is is non is is not zero, and even if it is zero, then I'll get zero anyway, right? But let's I'm take, taking the case where I have you know a particle one on state zero that I can destroy, right? The end result is the same because it doesn't matter the order in, in which I apply here. It's also another. Uh, symptom that we're somehow we're the 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 whole statistics on on bosons is somehow linked to the to the properties of these operators okay so this should be the same in, in fact 
what we just showed it as as a as a identity on on states and 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 zero equals one and expected values is this b1 the order doesn't matter and at the end what i'll get is the same state which is n equals n zero equals zero and one equals two okay and again i'll assume that this identity between expected values or states will translate into a property of the operators themselves okay let's move on now now what if k equals j meaning that um destroying a and or creating first and then destroying the same a particle in the same state or does it matter if i do it first i just if i create first or if i, I destroy first all right so let's take a closer look let's remember the vacuum state right when the occupation for all states is zero clearly we have to impose that if you try to destroy a particle in any of these states here for the vacuum you should get zero you cannot do that right you cannot create a uh, destroy this particle from from the vacuum uh, uh, that's that's the basis for for our argument here so if I try to to create to destroy first and then create I'm essentially I'm creating I'm not creating over the vacuum because this has to be zero right so I'm, I'm just multiplying this operator by zero however if I first create a particle on the vacuum there will be a state there this the final result for this state is n j equals one a single particle state as we we showed before and then if I come back and, tr and destroy this this particle that I'm, and I now have created then I should get something which should be at least proportional to the vacuum actually we impose that is going to be exactly the vacuum but so clearly the answer to this question is no because if I create if I destroy for something something in a vacuum at least for the vacuum that is already no the answer right I, I should get zero there's nothing nothing I can do I cannot go below that right I cannot destroy or or create something over zero I have to have a state but here I have a vacuum first so I create first and then then destroy then I should get back to the vacuum so we choose the normalization for for this operation so that I go when I create a particle and state j over the vacuum and then destroy that particle i get exactly the vacuum the vacuum state with normalization one right meaning that let's let's go to the to the to the blackboard to to see that that the, the meaning here is that if i apply the commutator of bj and bj dagger to the vacuum I should get exactly the vacuum and let's see why is that is it's very simple right is the, the answer is, is already there I, I'm just combining this with this but let, let's this one actually this one with this but let's see uh, how we get that All right so we're back to the blackboard so uh, I just mentioned that uh, if I have BJ over the vacuum there's nothing here so I get zero and if I try to create something over zero this is just zero times bj dagger which should be zero right there's no state here it's just zero it's not it's not even I mean that's the definition but on the other hand if I first create a particle on the vacuum and then I destroy this particle this I'm destroying uh, and j equals one this should be back to the vacuum right 
So the question is, if I now do this minus this, so bj, bj dagger minus bj dagger bj apply to the vacuum, I should get the vacuum. Why? I should get bj, bj here minus oops bj dagger bj vacuum which this one is zero and this one is the vacuum so i get the vacuum and then again i'm going to argue that this is precisely the commutator of bj bj dagger apply to the vacuum equals the vacuum all right and in general we assume that the following operator identities hold that not only and this we had argued before that this is of course a proof for this operator is acting on the state so is is more like uh, expected value result but we assume that this will work for operators so we notice that when k different is different than j all these guys are zero but when k is equals to j this should be one so we summarize by by this so that's our uh, operator algebra for bosons So in assignment, I will ask you to show a few other identities. First, you're going to show uh, the, that this commutator holds. Notice the minus sign here. And if I take uh, the complex conjugate of this, I get a plus sign here. This is going to be important. And from there, uh, and uh, I'll kind of guide you through to, to know what is the the normalization uh, constant when you apply a destruction operator on a given a, a given state of course you know that this should be proportional to the same state with all, all the other occupations kept constant except the occupation of state k should be, be decreased by one and the same thing as you know if you apply the creator operator here then the, you sh the normalization fraction should normalization factor should be square root of n k plus one, and the state here is n k plus one as well, uh, right? Uh, you add a boson on state k, so this should should give you an extra boson at that state. And finally, uh, we will you from these, and if you define the number operator that we mentioned earlier as the product of bk dagger and bk you should get exactly nk and, and and you can see that by here right so if you apply bk to the state you should get this and then you apply bk dagger to this one you get another square root of nk and you should get this so this already derives from from there so that's for the assignment, one of the assignments. So let's talk a, a little bit about uh, fermions now. So in a similar fashion as we did with bosons, we define these creation and destructions of fermions on this uh, number of occupation uh, basis as something that you either create a fermion on stage J, right? Go from NJ equals and nj to nj plus one times the normalization factor or you go from nj to nj minus one if you if you you apply it with the dagger uh, of this guy so cj dagger dagger is cj right the complex conjugate noticing that again because we're talking about anti-symmetrized wave functions here and anti-symmetric states these nj's have to be either zero or one right that's that's a constraint okay 
and this is going to be very important later. But again, uh, the order and how how do we know that uh, that this is anti-symmetric with with um, a relative to the exchange of particles and on different states? Well, remember that the order that we defined on the labels here is important. So if I change the order of the labels here, it means that I'm, I'm switching the ordering of the states in my my first quantization expression in the determinant, if you want. I'm essentially switching lines in the determinant so that I should get a minus sign. Uh, and that tells me that um, if I say, uh, if I have zero particles here, right? So this can be either zero or one. Let's say if it, it is zero. If it is one, I, I cannot create anything else. But let's say if I have, uh, this is k, state k, and this is j. And then if I apply first at j and increase one, or and, and then apply k, essentially what I'm saying is that, okay, I'm, I'm filling this spot here, and j equals one now, after I, I do this operation, and nk equals one now. Uh, it should be it should be minus if I change the labels right if I close my eyes change the labels here I, I should get a minus sign if I close my eyes here and I change the labels K and J I, I should get a minus sign as well and that's essentially based on on the fact that these guys represent anti-symmetrized wave functions for n particle states. And let's assume then that this property for these operators acting on the state it also holds as an operator identity, meaning that if I exchange k and j, the creation operators, I do get a minus sign. That means that ck j plus cjk dagger ck dagger cj dagger plus cj dagger ck dagger equals zero that is the definition of the anti-commentator of these two operators and that i should get zero and by the same reasoning uh if i now destroy particles on states with which have one one fermion on, on each of these states the order will also give me um, that i do that will also give me a minus sign so again ck ck cj equals minus cj ck we know daggers meaning that the anti-commutator between these two should be zero and also if i'm acting on different uh, states this should give me zero as well, right? As long as k and j are different from one another, uh, this should be should give me uh, zero as well. Let's look a little bit more on on the blackboard just to to make more more clear. Okay, so let's say that I have I state fermionic state with n equals zero and one equals one right so this is is a fermion so in in the first quantization this would be like this again a determinant if i not if i want notice the order here zero one minus one zero i have to always keep consistent with how i write the order right so that i, I get the correct minus signs meaning that if i have any one here and zero equals one i should get this one zero minus zero one 
which is minus this guy, right? Okay. Now what I want to do is I come and apply <coughs> a destruction operator and one first and zero equals one and it one equals one and that gives me uh, uh, well a single particle operator and and zero equals one right <clears throat> and now I do C not C1 and 0 equals 1 and 1 equals 1 it should give me the vacuum right but notice here I'm applying C1 equals 1 and I'm applying that in the in the in the second guy so this should be if I change the labels, these should be the same as doing C0 and 1 equals 1 and, and 0 equals 1. This should be minus, right? So this these guys should be 1 minus from the other. So if I'm talking the calling this n is 0 equals 1 this should be then to be consistent this should be minus and 0 equals 1 I'm calling this this single particle state here now if I now come come back and, and destroy C1 here so if I keep on this route I come and, and do C10 on N0 equals 1. This, oh, sorry. No, there is no. This should give me the vacuum, right? Now, in this other route, now I have to destroy C1 in this minus minus n0 equals n uh, oh, here uh, is this should be n1 right because I'm, I'm destroying 0 here I change the labels I'm destroying 0 so this is n1 equals 1 so even let's let's get this right so now I have to destroy so let me just just, just gotta get it back here there, there is this minus sign and one equals one and I should get to minus the vacuum state so it's clear that uh, whether I act C0 C1 or where where I act C1 C0 first and then C1 later this should get a minus sign over c0 c1 and 1 equals 1 and and we do the same state right right have to be the same state so it means that like I always got a, a zero all right okay However, if I'm talking about the same state, k equals j, then I should get ck, ck dagger, anti-commutator equals 1. Why? Let's take a look at the blackboard. So, remember, this, and this is very important, the order in which you create the fermions in a, from the vacuum is matters on the total sign that you that you get here you have to be very consistent so we're going to say that if i write something like this and one equals one and and two equals one and three equals one 
right? I have to choose pick an order. And I'm going to to pick the following order here, right? I create so I have one, two, three. I have I'll write something like this too. Three as well. Alright, so this is my plus. My my I this is the 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 way that I say okay this is how I define this notation here one two and three notice that again if I, if I exchange them the order matters just as a, they should be C C C dagger dagger dagger. This is two. This is one. This is three. Sorry, that this is one. These should these two guys should be related by a minus sign, right? That's the 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 idea of exchange. Why? Because in order to go from here to to this one, I have to switch these two, so I, I should get a minus sign. For fermions, there's always this game. You have to define uh, what what the order in your labeling is. Now, okay. So the the thing is, now I want I want to both create and destroy a say a particle with say two, right? So the question is whether this. Uh, so let's see, n1 equals n2, n3 equals 1, right? How do I destroy this guy? C2, and then I, I, can, I can write this thing, C1 dagger. C2 dagger, C3 dagger. Okay. Now notice that uh, here uh, the overall effect of this is to get something which will be proportional to. and 1 equals 1 and 2 equals 0 and 3 equals 1 proportional meaning that uh, that's that's the end that's the end uh, uh, result I'm destroying this particle here now what I want to do is create a particle the same particle on this state. N3 equals one. So I'm creating uh, this should be proportional to creating a particle on this state. And so, and this then should be, I should at least go back to this one or something proportional to it. Maybe not exactly, but clearly should be proportional. I go back to it. Okay. Now, all right. So I started in this and I sort of came back to the same state. In fact, we're going to see that we the we're going to define the normalization factor su such that you you go back to the exactly same state now what if you start by creating a particle here clearly you cannot do that because 
this is a three particle state you'd be cre this would be a four particle state with two fermions on the same state so you, you cannot do that this has to be zero you cannot have two fermions with an anti-symmetrized uh, wave function with two fermions in the same state so this has to be zero it means that if I then try to destroy something on zero this should be also be zero because this will be zero times c2 which is zero okay so already you know similar argument as we had in the bosonic case that uh if i do and then if if we if we arrange the 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 constants here such that set such that if i destroy first and then create this should be exactly the same one sorry and three equals one okay this should you should this should be pretty much the the same as before okay now uh, uh, I can simply add these two these two guys here so they're clearly uh, not different so uh, this is two sorry meaning that c2 plus c2 acting on and one and two and three equals 1 times n1 and 2 and 3 meaning that the anti commutator between c2 c2 dagger is 1 coming back to the slide uh, again we showed in the blackboard as a property of expected values let's assume that this also valid, valid for the operators and then I have the, the the whole thing for fermionic operators as well so the anti commentators of any two of these operators with in, in different states should be zero and if I have the anti commentator of CK and CK dagger this should be one and that's the algebra that I have these operators satisfying and this implies and this also being an assignment that if you have if you try to to create and we sort of use that in in the in the in the previous explanation that if you try to create two particles in the same state you should get zero always because if uh, you apply the the operator square to this state you should get zero because you can apply once right if it is uh at uh n k equals zero and then you create a particle here where you try to create the second particle it gives you zero same thing for for destroying destroying the particles this would be in, in the assignment and finally let's look at these identities in the assignment as well which are very similar to the ones that you derive for bosons and these are commutators and using that you're going to show that if you apply these operator c dagger c c dagger k c k twice or meaning squared gives you the same as if you apply it only once and the interpretation is that if this as in the case of bosons is our number operator we define it uh, this will give me either zero or one depending on whether I have the state occupied or not right so if it is zero you should I mean there's nothing there I, I act with a destruction operator I already give zero if it is one I then get one times the state and 
we can then associate a number operator with that and this number operator has this nice property if I apply it twice or once it is the same result meaning that 0 squared is 0 or 1 squared is 0 and that's consistent with this here too okay so that's it for this class uh, in the next class we're going to talk more about operators in this in this representation see you there